Hello and welcome back to the channel. I've got several questions on my previous videos regarding engine swaps. They are usually along the line of how do we make the engine mounts and how do we make everything fit together. I thought I would make a short video with some explanations and some basic tips that you hopefully will find useful on your own projects. First off, I just want to say that you can make an engine fit almost anywhere. It's just a matter of how much force and violence you want to use. But let's say you've already found an engine that you want to use and you know the length and the width of the engine and you know that it also fits into the engine bay of your project car. My first recommendation is to also check the height of the engine because that can be a tricky issue to solve if it's too high. Let me show you. The five cylinder Volvo engine that we have mounted in this BMW is very high and the oil pan is originally here where the front axle beam is. Therefore we used a modified oil pan from a Volvo 960 so we got the deepest part further back. Otherwise we would not be able to close the bonnet. The engine we have used is usually mounted transversely in a front wheel drive Volvo V70. Therefore, we could not use the original gearbox when we wanted to have it rear wheel drive. Instead, we used a BMW gearbox that has a re-welded flange to fit the Volvo engine. You can see the welding here. We also made a new and very basic mount for the gearbox in the new gearbox position. If you plan to do something similar, don't forget to use some kind of rubber or plastic shock absorbers. When it comes to the engine mounts, you also want to use some kind of shock absorbers. You will get very tired of all the vibrations otherwise. Lately, we have been using squared or regular pipes when making homemade engine mounts. It will tolerate bending forces from all directions much better than if you try to build something out of flat metal plates. Usually, we start with making these plates on the engine and the shock absorber mounts. Then we use an engine hoist to get the engine and the gearbox where we want them, cut the pipes so they fit and then weld everything together. This has been the easiest way to make engine mounts that we have found so far. I'll show you the engine mounts on the other side too. We made these the same way. Usually we make the pipes a couple of centimeters too long and then we just keep cutting a couple of millimeters every time and testing until it fits. Then you weld some spots so that they hold together in position and then you remove them to weld the rest. Then it's just to put some paint on them before you mount them for the final time. As you can see there are plenty of space in this engine bay. Originally there was a six cylinder engine and we've changed it to a five cylinder engine. So this one is a bit shorter. If you want to, you could cut the firewall a bit and move back the engine further to improve weight distribution. However, keep in mind that it will be much more difficult to work on the engine if you do that. This car will race on track days and we do not want to spend 45 minutes at the track just to change a spark plug that is hard to reach behind the firewall. Oh yes, one more advice regarding using an engine hoist when building the engine mounts. You absolutely want the gearbox mounted to the engine when you do this. If you have a roll cage in your car, you can use an adjustable strap from your gearbox up through the gear shifter hole and secure it to the roll cage. This will make it easier to adjust the direction of the gearbox towards the rear axle. When it comes to engine control systems, you can probably use the original system from the engine, but it might cause you a lot of problems if you don't have all the original sensors. And it will for sure cause you problems if you plan to tune the car a lot. A better idea would be to use some kind of standalone system. There are a lot of different ones out on the market, but my recommendation is to use the one that your local tuner prefers, if you're not planning to, to tune it yourself. We have previously used a VEMS ECU on this car, but now we are changing to a MAX ECU. As a last advice, I will say that it's usually a lot simpler and more fun to do engine swaps in a shared garage with some friends. It's always easier with a couple of extra hands, and it's nice to not have to buy all the expensive tools by yourself. I think that's enough for now. I hope you got some good ideas from this video. If you plan to use anything from this video on your own project, 
please let me know in the comments below. Thanks.